you've seen me give Rosie an upgrade, the frogs an upgrade, and Ollie an upgrade. Today I'm going to be giving Zoe and Ty upgrades as well. So like with other builds I've done and you may have seen in other videos, I like to make a mock-up beforehand so I kind of have an idea of what my final enclosure is going to look like and plan out my supplies, etc. I wanted to make this enclosure for these ladies because I wanted to provide a more enriching environment for them. It's not that they're current enclosures weren't enriching. They did have things to climb on and I did spend a lot of time with them outside of the enclosures and provide other enriching opportunities, but I really wanted them to have that ability to dig and burrow on their own and express those natural instincts. To start, I have the same stack that they were in, which included a cabinet stand, a 4x2x2 by two by two enclosure topped with a deluxe stacking spacer, and another 4x2x2 by two by two on top. In the original enclosures, um, these two girls had Zen Caves, they each had a branch, and a Mag Natural. So I'm going to recycle and reuse all those things in their new habitats. Okay, the first thing I will need to do with this setup is to install these really cool Zen backgrounds, and then I'm going to throw in my arid bioactive substrate mix and some leaf litter, and once all of that's in, then I can start putting in some of my hardscaping stuff, including my two zen caves, some branches, as well as the mag naturals that were in the enclosure previously. And then last, I'm going to put in my plants, which I'm super excited to show you which ones I chose. If you liked this video, make sure to show us some love by liking and commenting. I want to hear what you include in your bioactive builds. There's so many ways to customize it with different plants and there's so many different species of cleanup crew insects. So I want to know what you guys do. Okay, to start this build for these two ladies, I need to take apart their pre-existing enclosures. Um, because their enclosures are in good shape and um, all we're really doing is upgrading them. I think it's a great idea to recycle the enclosures that they already have. So here I am taking off my doors, taking off all my accessories, taking Miss Zoe out. We were using Zen mats as our substrate previously in these enclosures and I just wanted to show how easy it is to just roll it up with all the grossness on it so that you can take it and clean it elsewhere and you don't leave bearded dragon poops everywhere. Next, I disinfected the enclosures using some Dilute Dawn. Another cleaner that I really like to use is F10 Veterinary Disinfectant. So once everything was nice and clean and dry, I installed my new substrate shields, which I hadn't used previously because we were using a solid substrate, as well as putting in my bio basins. So once my bio basin was nice and secure and installed, I installed our Zen backgrounds into these enclosures. You might notice that the top one's a different color, and that's only because it's a prototype that we had sent to the office eons ago. So now it's time to start putting in my substrate. So I'm using this really cool arid bioactive substrate mix. It's got all these cool components in it. Um, there's excavator clay, topsoil, charcoal, all sorts of really cool things to make this nice, nice substrate for these guys. I'm not adding in a drainage layer because I'm not planning on hooking this up to my Miss King system and I will just manually miss these enclosures. For these girls, I thought it'd be super fun to make these enclosures in tandem. So like, as I put the substrate in Zoe's on the bottom, then I do the same steps on top in Ty's enclosure. Okay, so now I am pouring water onto my substrate so that it sticks together so that I can actually kind of form some burrows for the bearded dragons to start with. Then they can go in and dig as they please. So now that that's nice and moistened, I'm gonna put in my leaf litter, which will help support my cleanup crew, which is 
the bugs that will be helping keep this bioactive enclosure clean. So now I'm gonna start doing some of my hardscaping. We are putting in the Zen Caves. Miss Zoe has a corner cave and Miss Ty has a standard Zen Cave. Um, I'm also putting in their branches as well as some cork rounds. Before I put in some of my bigger accessories, it's time to put my plants in. I unfortunately don't remember every plant that I put in, but I picked a bunch of really cool succulents and cacti that would be appropriate for this environment. So some of the ones that I can remember are prickly pear pads, earth stars, spaghetti agave, an aloe plant, and some elephant feed. A little caveat that comes with using cacti species is, um, for example, with the prickly pear pads that I'm using, they are spineless. So if you are choosing to use any sort of cactus, make sure that it's a spineless variety that won't hurt your beardy. Okay, so now it's time for the finishing touches. I'm giving them their mag naturals back that they had, as well as reinstalling the lighting. So I'm using a 36 inch 10.0 UVB bulb and a 36 inch LED plant light strip, as well as an 80 watt halogen basking bulb. My plant bulb and UVB bulb are mounted on the inside of my enclosure um, using zip ties, and my basking bulb is on top of the screen, about 12 inches away from the cave substrate. I do wanna talk about a common misconception with keeping bearded dragons, and that is that they just come from the desert. That is completely inaccurate. They are actually found in various climates and environments within Australia, including woodlands, coastal dunes, scrublands, and tropical savannas. So what I'm trying to do here is create this arid, bioactive environment for these two girls. I'm trying to go for that woodland, scrubland type environment. So even though this is technically an arid bioactive substrate, we still need water. Moisture is still important in these habitats. Bearded dragons actually do prefer to be in the 30 to 40% humidity range versus being super duper dry. Last but not least, my cleanup crew. So here is my little arid isopods. Um, Ideally, you would put your cleanup crew in between your substrate layer and your leaf litter layer, but you know, I was excited again and I forgot. So I just, it's not a big deal. It just means I had to work a little bit harder to try to get them in between and under the leaf litter. So I'm using some arid isopods and springtails. Because again, this is arid, it's a little bit different than our tropical bioactive enclosures. We need to make sure that the cleanup crews can survive that arid environment and they don't die from dehydration. All right, let's see what these two lovely ladies think of their brand new houses. I really hope that they enjoy it and it is as enriching for them as it was for me to make it. video and if you did make sure you like and subscribe to our channel as well as our other social media platforms is that right so is that what you're trying to tell them <laughs> she wanted to tell you guys personally <laughs>